In the history of aerospace engineering, success was once measured by a rival, a singular flawless mission to a defined objective. Today, success is measured by repetition. This shift from perfection to frequency conceals a profound mechanical paradox. For years, the Starship program was defined by intentional failure, where every explosion was a controlled autopsy and every anomaly became a new data layer. Then came Starship Flight 11, which defied that history. It executed every sequence, ignition, ascent, staging, re-entry, splashdown with mathematical precision. Telemetry channels returned nominal. Not a single subsystem exceeded its red line. Observers called it flawless, but in rocketry, perfection is not data, it is silence and silence conceals what noise usually reveals, weakness, drift, or error. The paradox emerged. How could a system forged through failure suddenly operate with no resistance from the laws that had previously punished it? This flawless mission compressed timelines for the next generation, but some engineers questioned what the data was not showing. When physics stops punishing you, it may be because the next harder test has not yet begun. The success of Flight 11 created a new institutional variable, overconfidence. It meant the schedule had overtaken the margin. It meant physics would decide when the countdown truly ends. The V3 configuration, Booster 18 and Ship 39, was the immediate structural consequence of that success representing not a patch, but a complete structural rewrite. The new lower stage Booster 18 mounts 35 Raptor 3 engines, each producing 3.5 meganewtons, MN of thrust, yielding a total liftoff thrust of 122 MN. This represented a 15% increase over Flight 11. Chamber pressures were raised to 330 bar, thermal liners were reduced, and new regenerative cooling channels were incorporated into the thrust dome. Similarly, Ship 39 incorporated a hybrid alloy stack in place of 304L stainless steel, resulting in a stage that was seven tons lighter and 10% stiffer. The entire redesign focused on two numbers, efficiency and frequency more thrust per mass, and more launches per quarter. This aggressive acceleration, however, pushed the entire vehicle closer to its ultimate mechanical boundary, forcing the system to operate continuously at the material truth threshold. The physical boundary emerged from the environment of the launch itself. Pad 2 built 200 meters from the original mount, integrated water-cooled steel plates, a flame diverter, and shock isolation units. It was designed to absorb 10,000 kilonewtons of reflected energy, yet real launches do not obey averages. They find the weakest link. This new structure intended to mitigate heat stress simultaneously amplified acoustic feedback sound waves at the moment of launch reflect upward at up to 180 decibels. That energy re-enters the lower engines, producing a cyclical 20 millisecond pressure spike every 400 milliseconds. The booster's control system perceives this as noise, but the structure experiences it as resonance. The resulting dynamic coupling, the stacking of booster vibration, pad rebound, engine oscillation, and thermal expansion moves the system toward the harmonic edge. Records showed that while the V3 thrust structure was statically tested to a 110% nominal load, flight introduces motion, which is multiplicative. When frequencies align, a static tolerance of 110% can drop below 95%. The most critical factor was not engineering mechanics, but the compression of human time. 
The push for acceleration after Flight 11's success began quietly. Internal test documentation shows Raptor 3 engine burn-in schedules were compressed by 18 percent. Qualification cycles were reduced from 2,000 to 1,600 seconds per engine before acceptance. While engines passed pressure and flow targets, physics does not grade on compliance. At 1,600 seconds of test time, thermal fatigue testing remains incomplete. Microcracks in nickel alloy, typically harmless, can remain dormant until exposed to the specific structural vibration range of 60, 70 Hertz. If those frequencies overlap, a benign imperfection, a single microcrack, can become a chain reaction, hot gas leak, asymmetric pressure, gimbal correction, and finally, an uncontrolled roll. This is how Starship Flight 2 and the Challenger disaster both began, separated by less than two seconds of reaction margin. The risk to Flight 12 would not be outright explosion, but a near miss recorded as a transient oscillation event. The danger stems from synchronization, the precise moment when structural vibration, acoustic reflection, and gimbal correction align. This event would manifest at T plus 2.0 seconds as the pad resonance couples with the roll moment, lasting for 0.9 seconds and generating 2.2 G lateral acceleration. Telemetry from Booster 11 already showed a 2.6% lateral thrust asymmetry, a number Flight 12's higher thrust density was likely to amplify to 3.1% or 3.4%. The control system can correct up to 4% before auto-destruct triggers. This narrow margin, perhaps a 0.7 degrees roll deviation, measures the extent of the software's authority and represents the kind of brush with physics that rewrites procedures. The systemic risk was compounded by the complexity of the new reusable elements, particularly the integrated hot staging module. This innovation allowed the ship 39 engines to ignite before separation, saving propellant and increasing the vehicle's terminal velocity, or delta V. The trade-off was immediate. The hot plume from six Raptors could exceed 1,700 de Duracry and strike the booster's top dome for nearly a second. The system was exchanging the known vulnerability of landing legs for absolute dependence on the tower's mechazilla arms, which required hydraulic synchronization and a maximum tolerance of plus 20 semimeters for capture. Furthermore, the new 1353 shutdown profile, designed to increase vertical stability and simulated redundancy by 34%, introduced new vibration harmonics at the moment of engine cutoff. The perfect mission also concealed a critical data void in Flight 11. During re-entry, two thermocouples on Ship 38's dorsal panel reported readings identical down to the last decimal point for 0.6 seconds. This condition was statistically impossible under turbulent plasma flow, yet the data integrity checks were valid. The system's redundancy algorithm treated these identical values as stable, masking a potential for sensor saturation. The event passed without incident, but the true heat flux on that segment was lost, meaning a critical variable in the thermal environment remained undefined. Had the thermal load been higher, the heat flux could have exceeded material limits by 2.3%. The failure went unnoticed because no anomaly flag was triggered, proving the system was trained to see deviations as danger, but not their absence. This was the unseen reversal. Perfection was not safety, it was opacity. This data opacity then propagated through the V3 development. The causal inversion was complete. A flawless mission did not reduce risk, it only concealed it. By eliminating anomalies, engineers had inadvertently eliminated calibration points, meaning every structural model was based on data that ended where stress began. They were designing forward with incomplete boundaries. 
Early simulations for Booster 18 showed that the models based on Flight 11 data underpredicted vibration amplitude by 18.6% during throttle down events. This could have led to structural fatigue at the engine skirt interface. The causal chain was visible. Flawless data, reduced testing need, accelerated timeline, unvalidated model, new resonance mode. A perfect success had silently engineered a future failure. The ultimate inversion was hidden in a single ignored assumption that was later punished by physics. The post-flight review of Flight 12 traced the entire subsequent chain of anomalies back to an assumption of symmetrical frost accumulation in the hot staging vent design. Pre-launch fueling and solar exposure created a temperature gradient of up to 14 degrees C's across the ring, meaning the east-facing vents accumulated thicker frost constricting the flow area by 12%. When the upper engines ignited, the back pressure climbed faster on one side, generating a rotational moment of 72 kilonewton meters. Thermal cameras had caught the asymmetry even before liftoff, but pattern recognition filters labeled the data as nominal variants. Automation had overruled intuition. This localized overpressure and asymmetric thrust during separation forced the booster to recoil five meters downward. Though the separation succeeded, the heat warpage developed a 1.8 millimeter circumferential distortion in the hot staging ring. This tiny invisible defect propagated into the descent sequence. When the flip maneuver began, the structural distortion caused an unexpected 42 hertz resonance, exactly matching the frequency of the landing rail assembly. As the 13 to 53 landing sequence began, the distortion altered fuel inlet alignment by millimeters, causing two engines to draw slightly lean mixtures and one engine's chamber pressure to drop to 260 bar. The guidance system compensated, but the booster maintained stability only by consuming extra methane. The final system test occurred at 320 meters altitude when a sensor misread due to the sustained vibration. For 0.4 seconds, the controller believed the booster was six meters higher than reality. Simultaneously, one of the three landing engines flickered due to low inlet pressure. Descent speed increased from 5.22 mass to 7.8 mass. The booster settled between the catch arms with only 1.2 meters clearance. Post-flight analysis revealed the true severity. The fracture strain limit of the hot staging ring was 0.22%. The measured distortion equaled 0.9%. The success of Flight 12 existed inside a fractional margin of 0.03%. The phenomenon of cumulative fatigue is not exclusive to Starship. The high frequency cadence of the Falcon 9 program demonstrated that repeated success introduces friction between mechanical endurance and human perception. For instance, an older Falcon 9 booster, B-1062, recorded elevated vibration amplitude of 0.112 G on its central engine mount after 16 successful flights. This resonance, dismissed as within tolerance, caused a 2.3 millimeter deflection in the interstage structure. Had the load persisted three seconds longer, it would have exceeded the structure's yield strength. The material was still strong, but no longer predictable. The high cadence system was operating in a state where a flaw from the previous flight was masked by a compensating maneuver in the current one, propagating a subtle risk through the entire operational cycle. The philosophical error lay in assuming perfection could be scaled. Investors treated Flight 11 as validation that reusability was routine. The private sector system redefined the bureaucratic rhythm into velocity, allowing iteration to replace bureaucracy. However, physics is not loyal to ambition. The moment cadence overtakes caution, the system begins to operate beyond its capacity for human understanding. 
The core lesson was that physical laws do not scale with workflow. Every launch is an independent experiment, never routine, only repeated. The findings of the Flight 12 near miss forced an immediate structural correction. Future boosters adopted heated vent channels with resistive elements to prevent the frost asymmetry that initiated the failure chain. Software thresholds for dome pressure were tightened to trigger review at plus two bar, not plus five. The procedural solution involved adjusting pad fueling schedules to maintain uniform solar exposure, even requiring the rotation of the stack before propellant loading. This slowing down of the preparation process reintroduced the necessary safety margin. The paradox returned full circle. To accelerate long-term safety, the process of preparation had to slow down. Iteration speeds evolution, but it also accelerates the arrival of unseen limits. The acceleration amplifies fragility, stretching material endurance further into uncharted limits. Records show that even with AI-driven inspection, each reused engine bell accumulates micro-pitting. Each turbo pump shaft endures tensile cycles beyond 105. The hardware keeps flying, but the internal data begins to drift. Every simplification made to reduce refurbishment time is a wager against chaos. The system will always live inside the boundaries carved by the indifferent geometry of physics. The next flight inherits the silence of Flight 11, a model with no warning signs and a schedule with no slack. When Starship Flight 12 left Pad 2, it placed the program's confidence before the Tribunal of Gravity. If it failed, it confirmed the same lesson rocketry has repeated since its dawn. That speed without margin is just deferred consequence. Progress is precision under time pressure. This is the cold, final truth. The system always finds equilibrium. The rhythm of launch defines this era, yet propulsion obeys no calendar. A rocket knows only pressure, temperature, and vibration. It performs until the numbers exceed tolerance, and then instantly it fails. That is the moral geometry of motion. Every system that accelerates must eventually confront the speed of its own understanding.